So let's get Medi on to the stage. Where you at, dude? Oh, there he is. Look at that. How you doing, man? Hello. Yeah, I'm doing uh, great. What about you? I, I have my shirt, right? So look, you're doing your duties. Uh -huh. there. Look at that shirt. Look at that. This is it. I feel Where like is the mother gun? That I think I think you you'll re represent the colors just fine. So, dude, uh, John of Andano, in, in case you're just joining, he's been looking for the elusive mother duck for the past 15 years, and so maybe he'll find him by the end of this conference. Maybe not. Who knows? But you got to talk for us, huh? You're coming at us from mother duck. Folks already saw harnesses uh talk he was here talking about duck db and different ways that people are using duck db he gave mother duck a shout out in there i'm excited for what you got i'm gonna throw your presentation on the screen and i'll be back in just a little bit cool great awesome um let me put it in uh in full screen all right uh welcome everybody so i'm here to talk about ducks uh specifically duck db uh, why it's fast for analytics, but also, of course, uh, how it can help in your AI and LM uh, workloads. So I want to start first with uh, this tweet, which is a bit of a hot take from uh, Vicky, which is working at Mozilla.ai. Uh, Rebranding our Python dictionary in my code base to serverless vector databases for funding purpose. And I'm not going to say here that, you know, vector database is not useful. But I just want you, uh, before I tell you which tool you should be using for uh, for AI or ML workload, to you know, zoom out because we are overwhelmed with uh, new tools, new technology popping up every time. And you know, picking those up uh, had complexity. It's also, also sometimes uh, just for hype. Uh, so talk everything you will see at the conference and myself included with some grain of salt and a second remark to, yeah, do I need this or would I use this? Dive, uh, diving into DuckDB, so what is it? It's an in-process analytical uh, database. And if you're a Python person, which I assume if you are at, the com at this conference, it's just a pimp install. So just a library to install is going to work within the process of your Python process. Uh, and there is no server to install. And you have, of course, multiple language and interface, uh, Java, Rust, or R, if it's your thing. Uh, there is also a DuckDB CLI I'll show you quickly after. But DuckDB is really a Swiss army knife, as you can see at the picture uh, and the diagram here, uh, because you can uh, read and write to multiple sources really easily. It's just a binary, so there is no external dependency. I don't need to install external thing to read to or write to S3. It is all packaged within a single uh, library or binary. So uh, you can read the Postgres uh, table directly from DuckDB. It has its own file format, uh, as you can see in yellow. The file format uh, support uh, AC transaction. Uh, it includes all metadata and all tables. You can have it in a single uh, file. And of course, you can write it to your common object storage uh, as you please or read from them and Parker, CSV, also table format like Delta Lake or Iceberg, what have you. Um, you'd also uh, be able to run in the browser if you're familiar with WebAssembly. Um, WebAssembly is kind of a container uh, to run a low level application and an intensive application within the browser. And that means that if you go to that website, shell.dogdb.org, you disable internet, but don't do that now because you're all connected and you're following the call. Um, but if you disable internet, you're still going to be able to run those queries within your browser. There is no communication to the server. And what's happening there is that DuckDB is running within your browser. All right. Um, so this DuckDB is kind of pretty popular these days. Uh, we've passed the 1.5 million uh, downloads uh, per week, and that's just on the Python uh, client. Uh, so what is Motorduck? Motorduck is uh, in the cloud, uh, serverless. Um, and it's uh, basically anywhere you can run DuckDB, you can run Mother Duck. There is no external dependency. Uh, DuckDB has a mechanism of extension, and there is a Mother Duck extension, and you're connected to the cloud, and you can scale over there. And we offer compute, storage, um, and share, so you can create data set and share. 
publicly or within certain scope using our organization, and we have a, a dedicated UI to use uh, the uh, DuckDB. And so Mother, uh, DuckDB is really, uh, and we've modern Duck a new paradigm. So you can have, as we just say before, DuckDB running in your client, as you can see on the picture, but also on the server, on the cloud, but it's not like, one or the other is really the two working in concert compared to standard cloud data warehouse where basically the client just sending SQL, uh, you know, text over the wire and not act doing the actual compute here. Basically, you can have compute on both sides. All right, I have a small demo here and after we'll see directly once you understand that how is fast. I'm using the CLI on three uh, gigabyte data set using the DuckDB file format. Of course, could have been uh, Parquet or Delta Lake. And what I'm going to do is going to run uh, quite a complex query here, uh, parsing some string and doing some group by, running it locally. And as you can see, it's going to take just less than a couple of seconds uh, for, for uh, three gigabytes of data. And now what I'm going to do is connect to the cloud and I just do attach MD. I have my token provision in my environment viable. Now I'm connected to the cloud and I can access this cloud database, DuckDB stats. And I'm running the same query. And as you can see, I'm getting the results um, as faster than I, I did locally. So this is how easy it is to start locally with DuckDB with this local data set I just show you and uh, connect them after to the cloud. All right, let's go back. Now that you're convinced that it is fast. So why an analytical database for AI workloads? Well, where is your existing data? When you start an ML or a project or LLM project, basically you need to fetch those data and pre-process them, right? That, that, that's the starting point. And often they are in the cloud data warehouse or in object storage. Um, and that's where DuckDB becomes handy because it's really the Swiss army knife and you can directly pull everything within a single tool and provision this data either in DuckDB file format and do your analytics or pre transformation over there. Um, so that's really great. Um, and next to that, uh, we also worked, if you look at the end of the pipeline, the inference when you uh, on the ML or LLM side, again, uh, DuckDB is a new side of the da database. I'm repeating, but this is another graph to uh, illustrate that. And you can put that compute to, uh, to the client. So the same way that people are running, you know, LLM locally with Olama, for example, and they run their LLM, uh, on the edge, on the client, you can also run, you know, analytics uh, on the on the on the client, but also uh, some ML workload. So storage and search are, you know, an important part of LM stack. Would it be you're doing a rag or a fine tuning? You can see that you have search and storing specific, uh, you know, domain specific data set uh, all over there, and that's where DuckDB can comes in. You can use it as a vector, uh, a vector store, you can store your embeddings. And it's great because it's the same place where you did your pre-processing data in your data engineering to have your clean data set. And now you can store your embeddings uh, over there. So another side of things is that, so DuckDB can run in Python, but it's really SQL uh, first. There is a lot of like um, neat features within SQL that DuckDB had. And it's just, you know, the language has been there, you know, for years. And that's the one that stand out. That's the one that is the common denominator around different profile, whether it be ML engineer, data engineer. Um, and so you can push the thing really high. So we have a blog post about that. I invite you to, to watch this. This all in SQL hybrid search using DuckDB. So you have it as an embedding uh, vector database and you can integrate the full text search. So DuckDB support the full text search and with the embedding methods to have an hybrid search, all in SQL. Another real production use case, you may know, of course, uh, Hanging Face, they are using the full text search of a, a, a functionality from uh, DuckDB. So they're using DuckDB behind the scene when you search through the data set uh, to that. So this is just to show you that this is not, uh, you know, supposition, this is things that, uh, where there is people running production workload. And another thing that I've seen, like this actually tweet start from yesterday, you can build different extension with DuckDB uh, and people. So there is extension to read Parquet, CSV, which are core to DuckDB, but you can also build your custom extension. 
And people like here are saying, yeah, why should I build like an extension to do standard linear or logistic regression? And, you know, I'm just calling in a SQL function and I'm doing those, uh, you know, simple ML workload within my NNTKL database where I do this transformation, where I store my embeddings. So this is, this is really possible, actually. So quick takeaway, um, what DuckDB and Modida can do for AI ML, ML workloads. So DuckDB is definitely a versatile tool for ingest and pre-processing data because, you know, quality of data is all what matters at the end for any of AI or ML projects. Uh, SQL for the win, it's simplify workload with just SQL. Believe me, when you start to have complex, uh, you know, polyglot pipeline where you do have SQL over there, Python over there, if you're riffing things and you can do all everything at SQL level, that's pretty handy and easier to, to debug. Uh, you have a new paradigm in database. It can live on the client, as I explained, also on the server if you need to uh, to scale. So you can leverage the cloud compute. Your, your expensive MacBook Pro is not anymore uh, just sending text over the wire to the server. It's actually compute. Uh, and I reduce cloud costs and also, uh, you know, improve the, the, the latency for, for the users. Um, and that's how you can scale with ModderDuck, as I show you with the CLI demo pretty quickly and easily. And at the end, finally, it can serve as a vector database to store embedding. And we have integration with uh, common AM and frameworks like Llama Index. And you can do uh, also a hybrid search uh, with full text search and embeddings. We have a blog about that if you want to dive into. Um, that's it for me. Uh, you can reach out on uh, this LinkedIn if you if you like me, please don't hesitate. If you're interested to know more, I'm always available for a question around data or DAC. And that would be it for me. And you've got an incredible YouTube channel that everybody should go check out. And especially if they're looking to have a good time and enjoy this, it is a one of a kind place to learn and be entertained. <laughs> Thank you. That's, that's a really good summary. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Well, can you stick around for like uh, 10, 15 minutes? Because the big reveal of Jono and the mother duck is coming up after our next talk with Alex. Okay, <laughs> cool. Thank you. All right. But I don't know. You got you got a dinner to get to. You got to go. Maybe you yeah. can watch on your phone too. feel yeah. free to just jump on. Yeah, of course. I'll, I'll do that. I'll jump on the phone. Yeah. All right, Benny. This was awesome, dude. Thank you for joining us. I'll see you in a little bit. 